Maybe it's still going. Maybe. Yes. Yeah. All right. So I'm not going to introduce myself again. This is your local. That is Argentina in the world map. It's uh, very, very far away from here. It took us a long time to get here. Uh, but it, uh, it, we didn't earn the price anyway. The French took longer. They are closer, but they took longer. <laughs> So this is what we, I'm going to show. What is the strategy of the local to try and sell wind turbines from the bigger design and to make it more massive? So it's interesting to see what I just saw. Uh, progress to date, what, what we have achieved so far, what uh, we have achieved in terms of a manual, uh, what are our next steps in the design of the wind turbine and our next steps as a local as a whole. So what is the strategy? Uh, we have to keep Pigot design, he's the master, so we don't want to contradict him. Uh, we want to reduce building time to make it faster. We don't want to take six days to build one wind turbine. That will never work for service for selling wind turbines. Uh, reduce installation time. We want to install it quicker and make it as easy as it can so that somebody can install it with the manual on their own. Uh, self or locally install. Combine, so that's kind of an IKEA concept. Uh, combined with 500 RPM, our other uh, uh, initiative, uh, it, they are very complementary in many senses. You are going to see more on that on Luciana's presentation, but they are very uh, complementary. And improve some aesthetic, aesthetic aspects. Some people say it's ugly. I don't agree, but... <laughs> so, for the blades, we have gone to um, fiberglass blades, uh, Clark White profile, uh, the geometry is still the same, we don't want to change that, otherwise we would need uh, a parking wind tunnel like they have in here, we don't have that. Uh, but what we have seen is that we have improved 7% on what we measured from the wooden uh, version to this other version. So it's not a lot, but still. Um, the, the idea is not how much you save in terms of technology, but how much you save in terms of time to build the blade. Uh, this is our super device to mount blades quickly because it took us a long time to measure the distances in the blades, so now we do it very quickly. Uh, and this is uh, easy to be done by an experienced. This is uh, for assembling the blades, so two plates of metal with holes done by a machine, so we don't need to be drilling, digging holes or doing uh, things that take a long time, so it's very easy and fast to assemble the blade. That's our super device to do the coils. We have three coiling things, so we do the coils in the whole phase in one set. So uh, it's pretty quick to do a, a set of coils for a, for a wind turbine. So as you can see, it's industrialized, but not so much. We're kind of in the middle of the way. We want to go a few steps further. This is the, the device to mount the coils quickly and not be like with a crew putting all the coils in place. This is very fast and you can, and we do the, the positioning very quickly. This is a vacuum uh, system with a vacuum pump here and that's the mode for the casting of the stutter. So the way, that way, not only it's quicker, but the final piece is really precise and you don't have a lot of work after you finish the, the casting. So that's the mode. Uh, it looks easier than it actually is. What you can see behind Kilmes is a brand of beer, so you can see why the stutters sometimes don't work. Uh, this is an image of the casting itself. We had a few problems in getting the resin to fill the whole thing, so we had to change a lot of parameters, and we still don't have it optimized, but we're, we're at it. That's the super device to put the magnets. It's pretty much the same as Pigot, but done by a machine. Um, we made it too thin, so it broke all the time, so that's how we fixed it. <laughs> Very professional. <laughs> this is uh, to unmold our magnets, because uh, it took us a long time to like bang the, the, like, the mold to take the thing out, and then it broke all the time, so we had to fix it, and lots of problems with that, so this is easy to unmold, and very quickly. These are the rotors, pretty much the same as figures, only uh, we made a few holes for that. It's a bit lighter, not much, but 
it all sums and adds up. Good job. Uh, so it's lighter. And the field frame is really different. It's much quicker. That's where we made most of the changes, and that's what broke first. So that <laughs> everything you, you go against Pigot, you see why uh, you, you would have told me not to do this. <laughs> we did it, and we learned it the hard way. Uh, so that's how it's working now. And we have reinforced it. This is an old version. Uh, but it's really quick to assemble, so we make the, the steel frame really quickly. Uh, we have positioning tops. It's only one piece, and all of the tops are in there, so we don't have to be measuring the 10 degrees and the 100 and 10 degrees and so on. So that's quicker. And that's like the final assembling. So we assemble it quite quickly. Uh, and anybody with a little bit of logic can, can do it pretty easily. That's uh, the tail. A bit of improvement on the design, if you would agree. If not, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm an engineer, so I don't know nothing about art. So that's the final uh, thing. And there it is flying. The person who actually installed that one installed the tail all the way around. So it looks horrible, but imagine it the other way around. Please. Um, the, another thing we worked on is manual. So it's a very complete manual. Of course, I'm not going to present the whole manual here. But it's a very complete manual aiming for the self-install installation of the wind turbine. Of course, it's a big challenge. It's not easy to, uh, to let anybody install a wind turbine. But still, we are trying with some uh, capacity building and, and training people, trying to get there and have people install their own wind turbine with a manual. So that's how, how it looks. I'm sh just showing a few pictures of, of some pages. So we have pretty much how to install the tower, how to do the foundation, how to mount the, the pipes. The pipes are already sent so that they only be put one next to the other and, and not think too much. If you think, you do think wrong. Uh, that's how we explain how to put it up. Everybody does that. It's only that we put some nice pictures and step one, two, three. Yeah, you need a, you need to, the truck comes with a wind turbine. <laughs> Free of charge. So that's how you mount the blades, etc. There's an explanation on that. And also uh, some pages on maintenance. Maintenance what to do every year and the maintenance on what to do every four years. Uh, I'm trying to run here because I'm scared of the chicken. <laughs> so what, what to do every year, like different tasks of maintenance. And now moving on to what our next steps are, because we know that we have made several steps towards industrializing it, but there's still a lot to do. So we have hired professionals on uh, industrial design. Two minutes, thank you. Um, so they are going to help us uh, improve it and make it quicker and go closer to the 1,000 wind turbines per year, hopefully. So these are some of the problems we have. It's a complex assembly, uncomfortable work vision, many independent parts, low tolerance. So things that we are going to work on. The mouth is pretty sloppy, and we are going to work on that too. Uh, this is the final piece. It works very well, but it could be nicer. And uh, I don't know, it's kind of ugly. Uh, complex mounting, and this is the problem we had with uh, doing things uh, our way. A lot of corrosion, so we are basically going to put all in zinc, how do you say? Uh, Alvanize it. Uh, uh, the diagram is not very clear, very, so we're going to work on that as well, the electric diagram. And work on the aesthetic, so basically see what's already out in the market and try to improve ours. And because so yeah, so that's for the uh, for the next step on the design. We have many lines of work on the design and also for your local. Uh, we are working on the redesign to make it cheaper and faster. Uh, we are working on the website and the identity of your local. We are going to do a smaller one, because we're working on the 700 watts one. Uh, we're going to work on the 350 one and on a two kilowatt machine. Uh, to do, we're starting to work with a local company that does uh, inverters to develop a local uh, uh, regulator, because it's really expensive. We have to import it from the States. That's the only part that we cannot find in Argentina. And uh, develop a commercial network first within the country, and then in Latin America, and then who knows, Mars. All right.
That's it. Thank you. Good. You didn't scare the chicken. Yeah. So we're almost there. I will give you my pleasure. So we're almost there, people. Uh, we're missing George and Norm. So George, please come up. And then Norm will be, whoops. Uh, and then Jorge. Sorry. Sorry. Perdón, perdón, Jorge. I was speaking in English. Sorry. Um, Okay, uh, I'm Jorge, and I'll talk to you about uh, Minbayu and our project to do water pumping systems. Um, actually, that's the latest turbine that we installed. Uh, it's, uh, I guess, a 2.5 kilowatt and a 27 meter tower. Uh, it was installed a couple months back. Uh, what is the need? Uh, basically, in India, we have uh, around 26 million uh, diesel pumps, 3 to 5 HP in size. So the idea is uh, how to tackle that. Uh, I'm not going to tackle 26 million, but uh, it would be nice to produce them and exchange them with uh, wind electric water pumpers. Um, uh, there's a government program. Uh, actually, in India, in India, there's a lot of programs. Uh, there's a lot of targets. Uh, in this sense, uh, we're talking about a target of replacing 200,000 uh, water pumpers, um, diesel water pumpers, in the next five years. It's a government target, um, but they don't know what to do or how to do it, basically. So. Hopefully we can give them one solution out of many. Um, probably most of them will be solar. Uh, one of the ideas that are out there is the fact that uh, you replace a diesel with a solar water pumper. Um, a problem in India is over pumping. So people, uh, people are depleting the, the water table. So part of the idea is to put uh, drip irrigation or um, install a drip irrigation and a water pumper and uh, a solar or, or wind electric or whatever goes in there. Uh, but uh, everything takes a long time. So I think five years will be too little. Maybe it'll take 10 years to do that. Uh, anyway, the, the goal is to develop and start installing um, systems that would be basically a wind turbine, a three-phase uh, uh, Hupigo turbine and connect it directly to a three-phase um, pump. It could be a submersible pump or a surface pump. It, the, there's been a lot of experiences around the world. Uh, I think most of the experiences that I've found have been in Texas, for example. Um, tests done with Bergy wind turbines, tests done with uh, Whisper wind turbines in, uh, in the 90s. Um, like uh, 20 years ago, 10 years ago. Uh, so there's, there's some experience out there, but no manufacturer has really been able to kind of uh, break the mold and really develop a market for this. Uh, the only place I've seen is in South Africa. In 1997 or so, um, they were installing some of these water pumpers, and there was a dealer that installed a couple hundred of them. Um, then uh, the company was sold to Southwest Wind Power. I used to work at Southwest Wind Power, and I was in charge of uh, trying to develop this product. And ever since then, I've been with this bug. Um, we worked with Grunfos, and uh, they developed a water pumper with the XQ Flex line of pumps. So the XQ Flex is quite a flexible pump that accepts DC or AC um, going into the pump. And so you can connect a wind turbine directly or a solar panel or the grid. You can do any of those three. So, but uh, you see a lot of SQ flex pumps or a lot of pumps running in solar, but you don't see almost any wind manufacturer working, working with wind electric water pumping. So I think there's a niche that needs to be developed. Um, what needs to be done at this point is quite a bit of testing. Um, 
I'm starting to do some testing, but uh, there have been some experiences. Um, I, I built a test bench and uh, I started testing uh, or trying to start testing the water pumper. I have some glitches, so when I go back to India, I will continue doing the testing. I was hoping I would have a curve, like everything really beautiful, but I'll have to email it to you next month. But uh, it, there are tests done in South Africa. There's a, actually that's a bench test. Basically, the, we built this in order to take it to the site. Um, I don't have a lab. I wish I had the lab that you guys have here. That would be very nice, but I don't. So what we did is we built a bench test that is portable. So we can carry the bench test to a farm, connect it to a pump, and uh, get some data out of it. So it's the poor man's bench test. Um, it worked. It's we tested it once. Um, we had some vibration issues, so we have when I go back out to reinforce and test again. Yeah. Um, anyway, the the overall efficiency um, is about 10%. This is kind of like a, a what you would get from uh, what the energy in the wind versus how much energy we can get actually out of the pump. Yeah, so this is uh, basically from studies from uh, in Texas, uh, which with USDA, the U.S. Department of Agriculture did some testing, and that's kind of a rough number that you can get. Yeah, uh, uh, I'll just go quickly. I'll show some curves. This is an example of a pumping curve for wind electric pumping system. Um, this would be for a one kilowatt uh, turbine. Yeah and uh, a 3.6 meters in diameter, um, 20 poles. The, these are a mathematical curves, yeah? So these are not uh, actual um, curves from a tested machine. It, we have this other one, which is for the three kilowatts, yeah? Um, it, each line would be for a different wind speed. Yeah, we have from three meters to seven meters, each one of them. You will find similar curves on uh, like uh, uh, Grunfos and the SQFlex manual. You will see similar ones. The, the difference would be in the Grunfos model, you will start seeing them at starting at four meters per second. Yeah. Uh, the defective systems cannot work at uh, three meters per second, you could say, because the wind turbine and the pump, and especially the pump, cannot work at low and low hertz. If you if it runs below 20 hertz, you will have cavitation problems, and your motor will overheat probably. So essentially, w wind electric water pumping you require slightly higher wind speeds than the same application for battery charging. So the the guide or the rule of thumb I'm using is you need basically five meter per second or better uh, for to consider installing a wind electric water pumping system. Yeah. Uh, these are some. Uh, these are actually tests done in South Africa, in the University of Stellenbosch. You can Google it, um, and uh, it's a master's thesis. And essentially, the these are actual. They built a they built a Hupigo turbine, a 20 pole turbine, and um, essentially they ran the test for seven meters in height. So it was just a, it wasn't a submersible pump, but a, surface pump, and uh, so based on the calculations, there's a slight difference in uh, between the calculated and the measured, but uh, you could basically say that uh, if we had, and this was done with a one kilowatt um, uh, stator running a 3 HP motor, but if you had a 3 kilowatt stator with connected to the 3 HP motor, you could probably start a little bit lower in wind and you would obviously go higher. Um, they only went to nine meters per second because um, otherwise they would have burnt a uh, motor or something like that. So, uh, but this is my reference point. Um, so I went ahead and uh, you saw the test bench has a stator and I mean it has a generator. So we've actually built the stator, we've uh, built the generator, and uh, I'm, uh, when I go back I will do the testing on a 3 HP motor. And uh, if anybody wants data on that, I'd be happy to share. Yeah, give me a month or two to do that. Uh, 
but uh, what is the immediate aim? The immediate aim is uh, we have a project in uh, the south of Tamil Nadu, an area where there's thousands of these pumps uh, that uh, farmers have in uh, basically banana plantation, and it's, uh, there's uh, wind farms everywhere around there. So wind speeds are around seven meters per second, annual average in this area. And uh, the idea is to create a model to get started in uh, actually going in there and maybe leasing systems or um, getting government involved to try to finance the system. And we're looking for partners uh, to be able to actually do something, to in the, especially in these areas where obviously a wind electric system would be probably a success. And that would be a really wonderful thing to get started. So um, we're always looking for volunteers and for funding, blah, 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 so, like everybody else. That's an uh, image of where we are. Uh, Pondicherry, where Mimbayu's base is in upper right, um, and we're basically in the southern tip of uh, India. It's essentially in this area here. Uh, but I'm looking at just one area, which is a dry riverbed with thousands of, of water pumps. Um, in India, there's a law that says if you have a wire and you have uh, power, uh, as a farmer, you get free electricity. But there's so many pumps in this area that the government doesn't even dare to put a wire <laughs> because they would lose a lot of money. So anyway, it's an opportunity to be developed. And I think that's it. Uh, thank you. Switch computers to get norms. Yeah. We have an adapter player for SVG. You have only HDMI or you have... Uh, I think there's only H HDMI here and we don't have H... Do we have HDMI? I tried, it's too big. Too big for No, it's too big for my computer to run. Ah, the presentation. Okay. It's for 400 mega. Okay. There are a few videos in it. Ah, yeah. Okay. Um, Does anybody happen to have an adapter for VS, VGA, and HDMI <laughs> by any chance? It's already documented. <laughs> <laughs> well, we tried it. It's a 400 megabyte presentation. Didn't run in my computer. Does anybody have a, a good like a computer that runs quite quickly with uh, Windows on it? With Windows and Office on it, yes. Yeah, with a With a VGA, yes. Hmm? Can we can you borrow that? Sorry, guys. Well, Thomas has one. He's he's putting it up. Uh, you, you, you don't have a ah in my computer. I I have no idea. Just could my computer hang when I try to run it? Maybe it's too old. I got a pen drive. Presentation is in the pen drive. Is it okay? Yeah. Thank <laughs> you.
behind? No? Yeah. yeah, but I, hopefully that will go... But you can open it from there as well. Which one is it? Um, the group presentation. Okay. Yeah. And that's it from the group. Mm -hmm. Ah, it was Thank you. Now, yeah, you can choose it's like a symphony. Sorry, sorry for that. You built quite an expectation for this presentation. <laughs> a great presentation, people. Are gonna love it. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, I have to stand up for this too. Uh, but you will, you will. You will. I see F5. Do you have enough computers? Yeah. Uh, no, no, we don't. Yeah. <laughs> I think uh, you have the presentation on the uh, process of the first try. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we just want to try to. Um, just want to make it work. Should we try this one? Should we do? Uh, extend. No, it's good, it's good. We got it. Okay. Yep, we got it. Okay. Oh, you don't want that. Oh no, come on. He doesn't show it here. He doesn't want to show the slideshow here. Ah. All right. Ah, there you go. Hi, good afternoon. Uh, I'm Noam from uh, Comet Me, an Israeli Palestinian organization. And uh, what I'd like to share with you uh, our development during the last two or three years in uh, water pumping, uh, mainly on wind pumping. So, uh, Oops. It's a very short presentation, so you know, only this slide can probably people spend an hour to talk about uh, needs, etc. I'd like to skip it, but just say that there's a huge market for water pumping in the developing world, and what we were looking for is the low cost pumping. For a single farmer uh, in uh, for off-grid community, which we believe is a key for the development, so we try to look at very specific specification. Cost is the main issue. We talked about it when we were in the car, and how farmer find it hard to raise the funds with microfinance or any other mechanism just to get pumping to his field. Uh, it must be built locally. It should be very simple and easy to maintain. And we were talking about flow rate between one to five cubic meter a day, assuming that uh, five cubic meter of water is uh, something that is good for one dunam. Again, it's a single farmer 
It's uh, not a huge farm. It's kind of the minimum, and this is what we were kind of looking at. Uh, if we have time, we can later talk why we chose this. And we tried to look at existing technology. Everybody knows this one we visited in the car during the field visit, uh, one of these. It's relatively high cost. It's imported. It is rel reliable, though it needs skills. It fails. It's a machine. The, the one that we saw in uh, our field trip was broken, and nobody cared to fix it. It uses high power. It has a variety of uh, pumping head and flow rate, like you can find many combinations. Obviously, the deeper the pump head or the larger the, the pump head, the lower the, the flow rate. The core technology of this machine is the gear. It's a dedicated gear. And it doesn't make sense that a group of people like us will try to, you know, to compete with a big company building such gears. Uh, so if you want to try to go to a homebrewed horizontal axis uh, machine like this one that we tried and built, tried and built, uh, I'll show you a short video. The few groups building such machine, I like the one of EMAS in Bolivia. They are building a similar machine. This one I built from a PVC uh, pipes that I cut. It's a tilt tower, so the rod goes inside the tilt tower. Uh, it's a simple uh, um, single action piston pump. Actually, it's based on the design of this guy from Imas in uh, Bolivia, the pump itself. Uh, <clears throat> the, big, the, the big disadvantage of this machine is that you get quite high TSR, you get high speed, and at the end it kills the pump. The pump cannot sustain such high speed. A piston pump needs to go slowly at a long strokes. Now, Putting gears into this one to slow the motion is quite complicated. For instance, you can't just put a gear on the top, slow down the speed, uh, and then put a gear down because you still need the mechanism that the, 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 the turbine will follow the, the wind. So you need the up gear up there and down gear at the bottom. It's getting too complicated, and this is something that um, at the end, we decided to look in a different direction. Also, braking system is not trivial. Here, what I did is uh, I used the furling tail, and I used the pulley on the furling tail that if I really wanted to stop it, I used to you know, uh, uh, pull the rope, and the tail would go up. So <laughs> we tried to look at uh, vertical axis. Uh, with the help of Yun that was working, uh, he was leading this project uh, actually. Uh, we built uh, uh, this Savonius to show you how it works. Later we can look at some of the design. Uh, it's, uh, it's a helical Savonius. It's built from barrels, plastic PVC or plastic girls that we cut. Uh, and then we put a gear was uh, five uh, was a reduction gear five uh, five times reduction ratio five times reduction ratio and uh, this one is installed in our center uh, it is installed in a cistern uh, let's see a little bit uh, uh, these are the design parameter that uh, we had and uh, this is the design uh, flow rate and uh, pump head, expected uh, pump head. Uh, we made it a bit larger than this design. At the location that we put it about the different, the wind speed distribution is kind of low. It's not very, uh, the position, the location is not optimal. So this is how uh, it looked in the design. Uh, this is the helical frame, very, very simple. Uh, over there at the top you can see the gear, or you can see the gear here. 
very simple braking system on a plywood uh, thing. How much time I have more? Uh, right. Uh, this is how we build it. You can see, again, this one is on a tilt tower. Uh, we might need to change it in the future, but uh, this is how we raised it. These are some of the results. We put an RPM sensor and we measured the flow rate. <laughs> you can see that uh, roughly you have, uh, uh, surprisingly for us, the RPM is quite high of this machine. You can see it gets to more than 200 RPM, this uh, Savonius baby which was quite amazing. It's quite a powerful machine. And you can see that roughly one meter per second produces <coughs> one liter per minute. So eight, uh, eight uh, meters per minute produces roughly between eight or 10 liters per minute. Uh, <coughs> this is uh, the dedicated uh, pump we built. It's a dual action piston pump, meaning the piston goes down, it pumps one way, the piston goes up, it again it pumps, it has four check valves. <laughs> you can see that picture in the middle is uh, the prototype. Uh, you can see a short video of uh, how we built it and uh, assembled it. <coughs> and the, the idea here that you have double the volume because each direction the piston goes, you have suction. So in our case, we installed it in a cistern. In South Mount Hebron, you don't have wells. The aquifer is very, very deep for one. And the second is that Israel does not allow Palestinians to dig wells. <coughs> so they collect rainwater. They dug under the ground in the rock cisterns. The volume could be something from 50 to 200 or 300 cubic meter. So the rain <coughs> goes on the ground and fills the <coughs> cistern. This is our center in South Mount Hebron. Uh, we'll be, you'll see the cistern where we install the, we rented the place and renovated it. So part of the compound was the cistern, which is very nice because we can experiment on all pumping. Uh, <coughs> this one is quite old one, was dug by hand. Today people bring all the equipment to dig it. In the old days they were digging under the rock. Uh, and uh, I don't want to, I mean, if people want later we can, uh, let's uh, see. Then we, the drawback of this uh, Savonius was uh, that uh, logistically was complicated because like if you build the drums and cut it, you couldn't do it in the field. So we wanted to have something more modular that you can build, take apart, like the UP got. I mean, you don't build it with the blades here. Well, maybe this one, yes, but <coughs> the bigger one is you take it apart, ship it to the field and so we looked at another design. <laughs> this is by an American guy. It's called, his name is Lance. You can see it on the net. It's quite popular. So we built the model. <coughs> <coughs> we tested it just with a Jinlong generator connected to a battery, measured the, the power, the amper, the voltage, the power, and then calculated the, and the RPM and calculated the torque just to see if it's feasible. This was a small model. <laughs> so we built a bigger model. Uh, we haven't had time to test it yet. Uh, this is the bigger model. You can see it's two meters high, uh, diameter of about one meter. Uh, you can see how it moves the, the piston rod. There's just a bucket with a stone to counterbalance it. Uh, we need to evaluate it, you know, run it for a while, do all the evaluation, and then choose. <coughs> we have some doubt about the structural design of the tower. Maybe we need to change it. <coughs> uh, 
In this case, we just purchased off-the-shelf transmission gear, uh, which costs money. We would like to build this simple gear ourselves <coughs> to make it uh, a robust one, make it simple and low cost. <coughs> Sorry, we need to improve the dual action uh, piston pump and make some decision whether we want to go for the Savonius or the Lens and build the system and uh, try to distribute it. <coughs> this is it. <coughs> Thanks. about the inertia or what was not it? having enough stopping power.
Yeah, I think Marco, you maybe could compliment on that. We in Holland also had a similar situation that we for a few days had like uh, completely furled, but no problem, right? <laughs> And the second question was how many wind turbines you can actually produce, right? Yeah. How many wind turbines do you think you can actually produce in the end? If you simplify it, it, one. Uh, it depends. I like my what I chose was 1,000 wind turbines. You can you can use the method. I cannot answer the question like uh, how wind, how much, how many wind turbines you can produce. You can produce I don't know, however, um, how much you want. That's my answer. Sky's the limit. All right, so I'm going to get another question. So the order was. Uh, there was you for a sure. I think it was. <coughs> so, right, you, then you, then you. Right. right. Huh? Yeah, he's, he's in the queue as well. Okay. Uh, I'm trying, I'm trying to go there. Like, okay, so, question, uh, I think it's a similar question. We, we used to work with turbines, magnets, and also uh, 
excuse me? No. I was the principal is the same. I'm trying to understand a bit the motivation. So when you build an electric system, the turbine is just a component of the system. And in the example you showed, I think the difference was mm -hmm. the total difference for the was a hundred euros between the, the ferrite machine and the neobigium machine. And you know, when you consider the tower and the transportation there and the batteries and the charge controllers, so although in percentage it was you know about thirty percent, the cost of the whole system is completely you know, you can say it's negligible. Uh, and I'm so I'm trying to understand and some of the neobigium magnets are hard to come by, you can buy them offline. So I'm trying to understand what the motivation for this kind of work. And Kind of the same line of question for you. Mm -hmm. so coming from, you know, not doing development work, but just on the other hand, with my installer hat on, what I want to do at the end is provide electricity for people that don't have electricity. Mm -hmm. And if I would have the option of buying a Morningstar controller that, you know, I have hundreds of things, they work all over the world, or, you know, at least a decade, and having our student inverter with roughly the same statistics, that might be, you know, maybe they don't have it, all the functionalities that they want, that they want, but I know that I put them there, they <coughs> press on, and they work. Mm -hmm. And they, you know, there is a slight chance that the Morning Star will, will go bust, but I think the chances are not very deep. Mm -hmm. uh, so again, what is the motivation for for this? About the case, uh, the price, uh, the high price of the Nigerian magnet is, ju is just one of the reasons uh, that uh, we should be patient. Uh, it is very important also that uh, they make a role given from the first year of separation, so you will have extra cost uh, of replacing the magnet. And uh, also, uh, the fact that uh, uh, China has a monopoly in uh, the uh, production right now, so you're depending depended on China's uh, decisions of how much uh, extra. Uh, <laughs> but uh, the majority of them, uh, I think, I will say. <coughs> uh, so there are several uh, several uh, reasons. Uh, and generally, we want to to use materials that are available everywhere and uh, locally. And for me, I would return the question: Why would you use a paper turbine? Because you could actually buy one off the shelf from the manufacturer that knows how to do this. They've been doing like GE, been doing the electric machine for 100 years, and they know how to do electric machine. They know how to design it. Point is, and that's the tricky part of the question. <coughs> He could, uh, he, he's got 30 years of developing wind turbines behind him to go up to this design that we're actually, it's actually solid and we know it works and just start it. So maybe in 30 years I'll be able to tell you, look, this is my manual and if you build it, I know it works, you should follow these steps. But the question for now is just that maybe just like you tried to create a wind turbine that is so well designed that anybody can actually build it and it actually works, maybe someday you might have an electric system that's so easy and robust that anybody who wants to build it will design it and it will actually work for 10 years <coughs> and it's morning stuff. And I'm going to make that back to your point, actually. If, if you're looking for something that you just put it there and it works, then why not just put a photo on there? Why even bother with the wind turbine? Mm -hmm. You do. <laughs> <laughs> No, do both work. We we don't have we so like only knowing that it's exactly for the increase. Yeah. Yeah. Wind turbines have a lot of advantages, but I think everybody here that is actually installed these in the field knows that they also have a lot of problems. I would like to compliment also on that. Uh, I experienced that local supply chain can really be skyrocketing. So if you have an alternative design that could omit that you're uh, yeah, chained to monopolizing situations, um, that's good. And what I like about knowledge, knowledge is free. You can always decide if you go this way or that way, 
but knowledge by itself is free. So I don't see any hurt in that. That's not English, but yeah. <laughs> you know. Just a quick comment on the TEDx. Okay, obviously the reason, one of the reasons that we do this is uh, general research, but also I think it's the point that Pete is making that you know we need to have some kind of alternative in case we cannot use the new demon. But in terms of corrosion, yeah, I think with uh, galvanizing the plates or uh, you know changing some things that are uh, in the recipe book in terms of how you treat the, the back iron, I mean there's no problem. Yeah. Yeah, we have them for, for five years. Yeah, exactly. We paint it with epoxy first, and then there's no yeah. problem. It's the same here on the on the test side. So, you know, there is a problem there. You can solve it this way using a vimium, or you can also have an alternative material and use it whenever needed. Yeah. Uh, in the manual, it gives you uh, it gives you the choice of the three three types of resin. But actually, the first one, the polyester one, uh, you shouldn't use it at all. It's the one that we're using in the beginning. It's toxic. Well, apart from that, it's uh, it it uh, it becomes very rigid, so it's easy in uh, when the whole thing exp expands and contracts, it creates cracks, and then the water gets in. <coughs> Uh, but with real Lester, it's, it's, it looks like it's a bit more flexible. It never creates cracks. And so epoxy? So so epoxy we haven't used because it's too expensive. Well, when I talked with you about this, he said uh, I always use vinyl Lester. So. <laughs> <laughs> the key solution to the corrosion problem is the cost of the vinyl I think the key solution is uh, both the, the resin and uh, galvanizing or treating somehow, I don't know what other people do, the back iron disc. You can now, uh, when you purchase the new video magnet, you can source them with the epoxy coating, they come already coated waterproof. Yeah, in the example that I showed, it was the back iron disc that was corroding, not the magnets, but the magnets flew away. So you have this. <laughs> Pay more. Yeah. So you have a particular discussion on it. And then the question. Uh, this week's discussion controller, what's the cost estimate? So for DIY controller. Yes. I have no idea. <laughs> 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 to give you the frame, what's the frame answer? I have absolutely no idea. The target would be like I'm high in this, but I'm not trying to make fun. <laughs> no, but the target, my target would be to have um, a technology where uh, you probably would be based on something like an Arduino, yes. maybe. So you could put a few thousand dollars in there. Um, you would probably, I, I think, the whole idea of this, this project to take into account all sorts of types of technologies available in the market and all sorts of types of ways of doing the circuits which can also be used by the locals uh, according to the different supply chain. Because when we move from the turbine into circuits, we move from wood, steel, or magnets into microelectronics and, and then things get a little bit more complicated in terms of supply chain. But then here was, the real thing here is that if somebody wants to build only uh, the, the motherboard, they can. And if somebody wants to specialize in building a fuel of the motor, they can. And that can be something that can get plugged in play and developed by the current company developed by the community. So, I have a <laughs> But it's, it's, it's definitely part of the process, estimating that kind of cost. Less than the wind provides for sure. <laughs> Uh, all right, so it was, yes, go ahead. Yes. Two questions. Uh, one would be for Kosa um, about the harmonic measurement. Um, 
Did you measure the harmonics in the in the current output from the rectifier? <coughs> was that the measurement that was shown in the graph? It was the it was on the line current. It was on the generator. Line current on the rectifier line side. No, it was on the on the AC side. Ah, you were interpreting on the network. Uh, on the AC side or on the generator? Yeah. Get out of the generator. Rewire. That's where it is. Before, before rectifier. Did you get any measurements on the current, on the rectifier current? No. Uh, the rectifier current is uh, just the ripple. It has, the, it's the DC. It has a DC ripple on it. And you didn't get any current measurements on that side? No. Uh, I think you, you cannot do that there, but. I mean, like measuring on, you need on AC current. Well, you can measure harmonics on the AC side, basically. Oh, okay. You can measure on the DC side as well. Oh, I don't know about the, that. The, 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 uh, no, I if you needed some kind of special system, uh, if you measure the current with the, with the harmonic injection. <coughs> uh, we have only measured on the AC side. Yes, only I don't know the process for the DC side. And uh, now we are starting to get into analyzing that part of the circuit. Okay. So I don't know more than that. What can you inject into the battery? Yes. Uh, my question was because uh, when, when you measure the this current with ripple, you know, and, and it's got harmonic content, uh, sometimes you need a low pass filter just to to make out uh, what's really the DC component. So I uh, just wanted to know if what kind of filter you would need for that. Well, right now there's no filtering, but uh, we are working. Like Nasus is working on on that. Maybe maybe you can add something on that, Nasus. I don't know. Actually, if you take into consideration the cost of the materials, it's cheaper to do it with wood. And it makes sense if you're trying to teach somebody to do their own wind turbine, to do it with wood because it's easier to do one set of blades out of wood than to make one set of blades with fiberglass. But when you're trying to make a series, uh, the difficult part is to get the, the mold done uh, with, a good, uh, with a good precision. But once you get that done, uh, the, the blades are done pretty quickly. So the cost is a little bit higher in the materials, but if you take into consideration the cost of, of, the, of the, labor. the labor, then of course it would be way more expensive to do it uh, with wood. So that's the, the big advantage. Two. Uh, to wind the coil, it's about, uh, I would say like one hour, one hour and a half. 
to do the whole the whole set of nine coils for a 700 watts uh, wind turbine, so three sets, three phases of three coils. One hour and a half. Uh, to build the whole wind turbine, with uh, considering uh, everything, like doing the the boxes and the tower and the electric part and everything, it, we have calculated around 70 hours. 70, 70, 70 human hours. So if it's like two people, it's 35 hours. So it's like one week of two people. In Argentina? Uh, help me out here, but I think it's something like maybe a hundred pesos or maybe ten dollars an hour, something like that. Yeah. A ver, Fer, vos que sabes, ¿cuánto, ¿cuánto cuesta la hora hombre en Argentina? ¿Tenés idea? ¿O alguien? ¿Alguno de los argentinos? No, bueno, el, el mínimo, el salario mínimo que son ocho mil pesos, no sé, siete mil, seis mil. Sí. 7000 y son 70 horas, son 100 pesos. Yeah, more or less 10 hours, 10 dollars an hour. It's a factor 8 difference. Huh? It's a factor 8 difference. Oh, that's 8 times more. Which one is the thing from that? You should be making your winter months in Tanzania. Let's go. I have no problem. I want to know something. But are you saying in Tanzania it's 8, eight, it's eight times? Ah, okay, so it's much cheaper. So maybe in Tanzania it makes sense to make them out of wood. I think that's that's pretty. I, I'm answering because I, I've seen something about that on the large wind turbines. I don't I don't know if it's going to change a lot in the uh, coefficient of aerodynamics in the CP for a small wind turbine like this. Maybe cost of in the, I work for a big wind turbine company and um, we have about 120 engineers doing solely blade design. We have, we have 900 engineers together to make the turbine, but 120 of them are focusing on the blades. I spoke with one of the guys uh, and he indeed says we, we have all kinds of stuff on our blades these days. But the classical vortex generators, they say that uh, it could actually be very um, helpful. Um, he actually thinks it's more helpful on small turbines than on big ones. So that's, um, yeah. But I've never explored it any further than that. So, yeah. <laughs> Could be interesting to uh, find out. But they try it on Thursday at the wind tunnel. <laughs> there you have your thesis subject. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, my, my menu will be pictures only, so no, so they're in any language available. <laughs> um, yes, uh, I'm, I'm planning to put everything uh, on wind empowerment site uh, as long as nobody has any commercial uh, plans with it, and I know I cannot stop it anyways, but uh, the idea is that anybody can use it. Yeah.
Yes, in our case it's the same. It, it's only in Spanish for the moment, but it's it, it's not 100% images. You need some text to tell people at some point. I, maybe you, you can avoid text. That's really amazing. Uh, we haven't gotten that far. Hopefully one day, but yes. Uh, so it's only in Spanish so far. We haven't planned to, to translate it in English, but why not? And of course it's available for whoever wants it. Actually, it would be great if there could be some interaction with other people during this week and we could improve it and actually make that a win empowerment document rather than just a Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. We'll see. We'll we'll see how the second version works. First was was terrible. <laughs> Yes. And also, from our point of view, we wanted something that maintained the accuracy without very easily. So we developed kind of a frame that uh, is a bit different. And maybe we'll put the manual on uh, Windows Phone and uh, website. Because we have a manual with all the details. That'd be really interesting to see. Actually, our our focus is pretty much the same. Where we are uh, trying to make all the wind turbines the same between wind turbines, but also exchangeable with uh, 500 RPM. So if you buy a local wind turbine, but you want to do your own stutter, or you want to buy just a part of it and and build the second part, or or make a spare part locally, you can exchange it, and and the parts are the same. Only that ones are done faster, basically. I'm always remembering that whenever you want to upload, there's a link from the site, and we're going to have, uh, we're going to have uh, on Thursday morning, we're going to teach you, we're going to have a one session only about that, so you can know how to upload the information. So I've got two last questions, uh, him and, and you, and uh, okay, I'm going to switch it a little bit. But, but, you know, Sorry? The wooden tower schematics, are they available? Are they downloadable? Are they just available somewhere? Uh, <laughs> yeah, the, we have not yet finalized. We, we got a bunch of drawings, but it's not uh, released yet because it's, it's a mess. Um, so even when we made it, we actually made it without the drawings. But we do plan to, uh, to, to put them also online, open source everything. Um, but we're actually already going for the next design. We're looking at fa um, fasteners. How to? We want to use clamp techniques instead of of screws that can uh, break off. And um, so we actually have a bunch of uh, people from Rumble, which is a corporate, uh, and there are five engineers of that engineering. They do foundation designs. They they pile big monopiles in the seabed. But they are actually in their free time um, looking, uh, making functions, morphological charts, so all kinds of innovation sessions to come up with, uh, with even a better design. So looking on production uh, easiness, um, costs, but also um, reliability and detectability. Uh, so we've got a whole bunch of criteria that we think is important. Um, smart redundancy, and, and, and they actually want to finish that design before uh, February, March this year. And then in the summer, they will go to Brazil, sponsored by the charity fund of that corporate. Um, and there they will actually build it, disseminate the knowledge to the local people, get the lessons learned from it, and then um, yeah, write it, document everything, and share it with the wind empowerment community. So it will come. But if, if you want, I can give you a bunch of 
drawings, but I uh, don't guarantee anything from them. <laughs> I guess we don't know it right now because we just built it uh, uh, last August and there are not so many generators built with heavy, mm -hmm. I guess. Do you mean the, the mathematization of the, of the yeah, material? Yeah, you would like look for performance uh, after a couple of years. Uh, I think the neodymium, I'm not sure how much it loses every year, but I think uh, it has a life expectancy of, uh, I think, 15 years. I don't, I don't remember the numbers though, and how much it loses every year. But it does demagnetize. I don't know. I don't know uh, how the ferrite. I, don't know I the, think uh, it know. demagnetizes slower. Slower than the. Uh, yes, I can check. <laughs> I think. Uh, uh, so the question from Argentina. Um, Luciana is going to show a lot of maps on that, so I don't want to go very deep. But basically. Uh, the north of Argentina does not have a lot of wind, so you just got that, and you have the, the center and the south. And in all of the places where you have the grid, it's not interesting because the, the, the cost and the price of the grid is so low that it doesn't make any sense to make anything rather than connect you to the grid. So it's only rural areas where uh, there's wind and you have like half of the country in that situation. Uh, I mean, half geographically, and then most of the, a lot of rural areas do not have access to the grid. It's actually it's five percent of the population, but in surface it's a lot. So it's like two million people in the country. So it's still quite a lot of people. And if you leave half of the country, then maybe it's half or even more because the center has the highest density of population and it still has a reasonable uh, good wind resource. Not as good as Patagonia, of course, but still pretty good. Well, in, in, in the case of Argentina, it's very clear that it makes no sense to do that because you have a lot of uh, families that are isolated and they only want like a light and a TV and very low uses. So they have installed big wind turbines in the past and they were throwing the energy in the in the dump load all the time. So And it was only more expensive to maintain, more expensive to install in the first place. So it makes more sense to install a smaller system and a lot of small systems like they did in uh, Inner Mongolia, where they installed a hundred thousand of systems that are really small, and that in, in that particular context, it makes more sense. Of course, if you are going to give energy to a whole community, it makes more sense to maybe have one or two big wind turbines, but it's not uh, the case in, in rural areas in Argentina, in most of the places. I don't know. Other places. Right. Well, thank you very, very much for, for all your questions. Well, Let's go 